everyone, this is Yvonne Montes and welcome to today's meditation. And today's meditation theme is about healing the inner child. And it's not what you usually get used with in this subject. We're going to be talking about your ears. And um, what do the ears have to do with the inner child? So, you know how the ears look like? They kind of look like a baby in the in the womb. I don't know if you agree with me, but they kind of look like that, okay? Now, your ears actually not only show your main traits or level of energy, but they also show specific um, traumas in childhood, a specific, you know, way of how you developed, okay? And... So let's let's take a look at that. Okay, so first of all, uh, you're gonna need a mirror. I forgot to tell you that. So you need a mirror, you need a piece of paper and a pen. Okay, and you can take a picture with your phone too. So take a picture of your ears. Okay, it's probably gonna be easier like that. Okay, and take a picture of your right ear and your left ear. Okay, so big ears. Anybody has big ears? No. Okay, so the big the big ears show people that um, have um, lots of vitality. That they are more energetic, but they also um, are risk takers. They are lively. They are energetic, and and they also like risk. Okay, smaller ears, you kind of, you're on the safe side. Okay. So you're more cautious, more thoughtful, more introverted. That's what the small ears. Okay. So you want to write that down. Probably want to take notes on that. Um, does it matter if we're looking at our left or right ear? You know, I, I would, in terms of size, your ear should be balanced. Okay. Okay. It, it shouldn't matter. Like if you have like really big ears, you should notice right away. <laughs> you, you know, you already know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now the weight. So if you have like rounded ears, okay, you're more outgoing, reliable, positive, sociable, ima imaginative, like you have more creativity, where ears that are squarish on the sides, like on the top, okay? You're quick thinking, insightful, and able to do several things at the same time. Okay, mine are kind of a little bit squarish here in this area. Not as rounded. Okay. Like the top. So am I going too fast? I just need to go back to see what you're referring to. So if your ears are rounded, you're outgoing, reliable, sociable. The ears that are squarish on the sides or tops or lobes means that the person is quick thinking, insightful, able to do several things at the same time. Can I see your ear? You said you have a squarish ear. Like here, you see, like I have like a, like a straight line here. It's oh not yeah. Like rounded. You see here, yep. it's a straight line. Right. No, mine are rounded. Mine yeah. Are okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm a, I'm a problem solver. <laughs> yeah. So if the top of the ear is pointed, like the Vul Vulcan ears, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're more secretive, mysterious, mm. Mm. and a good talk, a smooth talker. <laughs> and it takes a long time for you to get to know these people. Like it takes a long time for to get to know these people. Like they are secretive. They don't um, open up easily. 
mine? Nope. I'm going to tell you all my life. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the first time we meet. <laughs> so ears that are sticking out, mine are not, but the ears that are sticking out, you are more independent, doesn't like being told what to do, but also it means you are an orator. Or a, or a, I, ho- I hope I'm pronouncing well, like Obama. Obama has like ears like that. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> okay, so if your ears are like more attached to your head, like mine, you're a listener. <laughs> you're more inclined, you like that, you know, listen to people. Okay. People, so are your ears up or like higher than your nose tip towards the end of your eyebrows? Are they? Or are they in the middle? You mean the top of the ear or the no, eye- like the whole ear? Is it like higher to the to the eyebrows or is it like more in the middle? Oh, mine's more in the middle. Mine's a little but higher. Yours is higher. Yeah. Okay. So you receive information faster than others. You get quickly things. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. You catch up on things quicker than others. Yes, I can very quickly, yeah. You do? Pick things up, yeah. Alara, we're slow. (laughs) (laughs) Speak for yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Now, my my earlobe, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say my ears seem low now that I'm looking at a profile picture of myself. But whatever, it's all good. I don't know. Okay. So, you know, if your ear is like when you're like squishing it, okay, if it's hard, you're stubborn. Why not? If it's hard? Yeah. Uh, you're like no. willful. You're, will- you're driven. You're willful. You're like, determined oh no like when you're when you fold your ear down like that's what you mean by squishing yeah yeah okay mine i have like a hard cartilage here yeah me too where uh, wait i'm coming i'm coming i can't see where you're pointing to where it's just like when you're like you know it like I, I found people that have like very soft ears, very soft. I have soft, squishy ears, I think. I mean, I can feel the cartilage in there, but it's squishy. Okay. So if you are thinking about the opposite of the, you know, being determined, like, do you give up easy on things if you don't have quick success? Sometimes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. I do. I do give up. Okay, good. So it's good to know that. So write that, that one down, okay? This is not, it doesn't mean like it, you're fixed in a certain way, okay? All of this indicates, no, those are areas that you need to like kind of want to work on that. Okay? Right. It's interesting that people that actually work on those traits, the body feature change, it could change too. It's not like you're not going to deal with them, but it's like, you see changes. Okay, so you know this thing in your ear, like this is a helix. This other, the inside circle inside your ear, that's a helix, Mm -hmm. right? If you have like an outer rim that sticks out, 
people enjoy mental stimulation. Like you That's really true. like mental, act- like in- intellectual activities. Mm. Yeah, mine is out. How about you? Me Anna? too. Yeah. Mine too. Like, it yeah. really sticks out. <laughs> yeah, me too. We're, th- we're thinkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, do you remember, so the year lobe, let's talk about the year lobe. Right, so if it's, if it's like long, long, sorry, long year lobes are long longevity, healthy life. Ooh. You know, people in Africa, that make those holes and they kind of like stretch their ear lobes. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. uh-huh. For longevity. Uh-huh. <laughs> There is a point to that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have long earlobes. Oh, what are we gonna do, Alana? But that's only so that so think about it like you you had challenges in your in your house. Mm-hmm. People with thick earlobes have a large group of friends are sociable. Mine are not thick. We gotta work on that. <laughs> Is it weird when one's longer than the other? Hmm? Yeah. Like one earlobe is longer than the other. A bit. Yeah, and we're gonna talk about that. So okay. mine are two. One one is longer than the other one. Okay. Maybe I'm like half social. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. So those are your main, main traits, okay? Now the years tell a different story too. Uh, first of all, like inside your year, there is a projection of all of your organs, right? People like Chinese medicine uses that for reflexology or acupuncture to treat certain organs. Okay, so when I said like this is like how you were in the womb, but that's exactly how it is, right? Mm-hmm. So. Right here at the beginning of the outer rim, it shows how you were. So on the right, on your right ear, okay? Mm. It shows your development in the womb. And if it's like fleshy, thick, you had a good development, okay? If it's like, can barely see it there, you are probably born like smaller baby. What part of the ear are you looking? Are you talking about? Uh, so you know the eye outer rim, how it meets the ear. It's uh-huh. right there, where at that beginning of <laughs> the beginning of the ear. Oh, the beginning <laughs> of the ear. Of the right. outer rim, okay. A little flappy part. So uh, along the outer rim, it shows how you know, each age of your life Mm. up until like between right ear and left ear from the age of zero to 13 and around that age. Okay. Okay. So mine are like pretty good. Can you see yours? Yeah, mine, yeah, I can feel a little bit of mine. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so when you say a little bit, <clears throat> I know that Alana, like you sent me a picture earlier and it was a little bit like faded there. And that's why I asked you, you know, were you born a small baby? Right. Mm. Okay, so I can feel my outer in here is like pretty good, right? Yeah, I would go like a normal size. Yeah, I can feel mine quite strong. Yours is quite strong. Okay, good. So your zero, your child, inner child is zero. It's quite healthy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was at 12, 11 pounds when I was born. Yeah. Okay, so good. Big chunk. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. So, Alana, you want to write down that age, right? Which age? Zero? zero. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now you want to look, you know, at, you're kind of going like by finger by finger, right? The next 
kind of distance is your first year, second year, and so forth, right? And you may see areas that are flashier, like the outer rim is flashier, flashier. Like you see how here I'm missing a chunk of the outer rim. Oh, yeah. From me, right? I developed all right, not not the best. Like I don't have like a fleshy outer rim. Okay, I developed okay all the way up to the age of six, five six here. Oh wow. Okay, and after that, I didn't have enough nourishment in my way. See, it's like this portion is like missing here. Right. So if you're looking, you know, year by year, just put like a finger. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So mark the areas that like the ages. When I was at four or five, it was missing like it's very faint i don't see the four or five yeah and sometimes you know you might even have like little chunks like yeah, you right have there, yeah where you're yeah, yeah 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 alana you know i was noticing between two and four you were all right mm -hmm. yeah i've got a nice flappy thick rim at the top of my ear yeah yeah and then and it it kind of disappears it disappears exactly yeah <clears throat> so those are the ages that we need to like write them down and we're gonna work on that right okay yeah. wait we're working on we're not working on the the ages that where we're thriving right we're working on the ages afterwards that's right we're working on the ages when we're, we're not thriving that we need to heal Right. Okay, good. Okay. And then we're doing, we're continuing with the age of nine, sorry, eight, nine, ten, on the other ear, on the, on the left ear, we're continuing the same way. Okay. For me here is like, I can barely feel my outer ring. Like I, I have like the age of eight and nine, but after the age of nine, nothing. Like I have chunks missing and... <laughs> so, and that was the time when, when I moved out, when my parents moved out and I didn't have my grandfather around. And uh, he, my grandfather was protecting me, was very protective. And then my, when we, my parents moved out with me, obviously, my father started to be more violent and had more alcohol problems. So that was like definitely at the age of nine, like my development was not very well after that. <laughs> what are you finding, Anouk? I'm finding between age like 12 and 14, I think. Like then it gets thicker near the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that was that was a time, yeah, my dad was very <clears throat> abusive. That's when he used to throw us in the cellar a lot. At that age, he used to drink mm -hmm. a lot. And that was when we tried to stand up and stand up with, for him, like against him, but would always get pushed because we were too small. Yeah. yeah. So do you, do you notice that, and, and Alana, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of the same for you too, right? Like, um. Yes. Well, I feel like my, the rim is quite defined from like, yeah, nine, eight, nine up to about 12. It's defined, but it's not fleshy. Uh, it's fleshy. It's, it's got fleshy. On yeah. it. Yeah. It's squishy. It's squishy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But then but the heart, that, like the actual defined rim part of it, like the edge of it disappears. Mm. So you want to have like a, not, not only fleshy, but also like well contoured, right? Right. Yeah. Contoured. So right? up until about 12, it's contoured and then it disappears. Okay. So does that coincide with something in your life? Um...
I mean, the teenage years weren't fun, but nothing specific mm-hmm. in mind. Um, so my keep, keep in mind that this is not only emotional development, but it, nourishment means physical too, like food. Right. 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 Like uh, being able to absorb nutrients. Oh, well, then in that case, then at, well, we think at 13 was when my Crohn's disease started. Yep. So then my ability to absorb nutrients was because was compromised yep Mm -hmm. so does that match the year yes it does yes it does good (laughs) so those are exactly the ages that you want to put them on right Right. Mm -hmm. all the way up to like 13 15 and it may be that's why you know your earlobe is kind of like smaller right because your vitality wasn't as much Mm. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, my left ear one is smaller. Mm-hmm. So what age does the left ear go up to? Um, it, it depends, but it's like, you know, when you start to become aware of yourself uh, out in the world, right, which is around mm-hmm. 14, 15, 13, it depends for, you know, right. person, okay, around that age. Was that interesting for you guys? Did you yes. discover something new? Oh, so good. Oh my God. I loved it. I loved it. Like, who knew that your ears tell you that story? Ears tell stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. cool. I love that. It's very cool. That was cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help it. <laughs> okay, good. So you have your ages that you want to heal wrote, written down, right? Yes. Okay, so you keep in mind, <clears throat> and in this, med- like the ages, but try to vis- visualize yourselves, you know, in those ages and kind of remember, you know, how were you with food, with emotions, right? Because nourishment is, <clears throat> is not just emotional, it's not just food, it's both. <laughs> <laughs> for a mm-hmm. child is like equal or the same size right if you're like happy you're gonna eat if you're not happy you're not gonna eat or you're not gonna absorb nutrients right even if you're eating you're not absorbing at your um, natural ability okay all right mm-hmm. so we're gonna start the meditation <clears throat> and i'm gonna share my screen and i'm gonna turn off the video And as we're breathing in, let's focus our breath on the counting from one to five. And I invite you to count with me. And before we start that, why don't we Check a little bit our position, our body, making sure that we're comfortable, our back is supported, and the feet are flat on the floor, and your arms are resting comfortably in your lap or beside your body. <clears throat> Let's take a deep and slow breath in as we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale slowly, gently, two, Three, four, five, six, and hold for one, two, three, 
four, five, six. And let's inhale slowly and deeply and gently, as deep and fully as you can, guiding the air all the way down in the lungs, feeling them expanding in the back along our spine and our belly is expanding up, really fully filling up our lungs and belly with air and count together for one, two, three, four, five, six and hold for one, two, Three, four, five, six, and exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, and hold for one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's inhale deeply and gently and fully slowing down our breath even more. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And hold for one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and let's take slow and gentle deep breath. Holding the same pace as before. And this time, let's bring this magical energy all around you, taking a deep cleansing breath. Bringing that cleansing energy. And sending it that warm energy of your breath to any part of your body that may be sore or tense or tight. Guiding this person, fully energizing your body with your breath. Let's take a deep and cool and gentle breath in and bring more of this healing, cleansing energy deeper in your body. And this person sending it all the way down in your belly, along your spine, and on the exhale, feel that energy gathering up all these places where we might be tense, or if there is a discomfort, or maybe we can feel a block, something holding us. Holding that breath going down and let's allow that energy gather up all those tensions, all these blocks and gently loosening them up, softening up and releasing them all on the exhale without pulling or pushing, just a gentle loosening up, allowing all that is no longer needed or useful. Slow. This love in its own time when it's ready. And each and every shift as little as possible. We want to praise and allow the next breath. Move and loosen up and soften up a little bit more and more and deeper 
and deeper. So that you can feel your breath going all in all these tight and tense places. Gathering up all the tension and breathing it out. So you can feel safe and comfortable and relaxed and easy. Watching this cleansing action of your breath with friendly and attached awareness. And maybe there are distracting thoughts or emotions. Maybe a part of you wants to follow my voice and a part of you wants to follow these distract distracting thoughts or noises around you. And that's all right. You can always return to my voice in your own time. That's right. Whenever you're ready. And those thoughts, they can also be sent out. On the breath out. So that inside, you can be still and quiet. Like a lake with no recall. Settling down these waves of emotion and thoughts. And now, I invite you to imagine a place where you can feel safe and peaceful. And it may be a place where you feel comfortable and safe as a child, a playground or your room, or a place of vacation at the beach. Or it could be an imaginary place. Or a place you always wanted to go to. And it doesn't really matter. Just so it's a place that feels good and peaceful for you. And allow that place become real, looking around at your feet, your body, taking that place in with your eyes, enjoying the colors, the light, the scenery, And maybe you can even notice the objects becoming brighter, the colors more vibrant. You may even feel the breeze, the movement of air touching your skin. and listening to the sounds of this place, whatever they might be, either wind or water, or the music of birds, or the sound of waves, or could be crickets, playing their happy music, Just allowing your ears to become familiar with the sounds of this place. And you could be sitting or lying down, just allowing yourself to feel that surface 
you're sitting against or lying upon, perhaps feeling the ground underneath your feet, either sand or grass. Or might be a cozy carpet. Or it may be a warm rock in the sun. And feeling that air on your skin either brisk and breezy or soft and steam, grease and dry or balmy and wet. Perhaps you are inside feeling the warmth of a cozy fire in your face and hands warming you up. Or maybe you are outdoors and it's just a subtle caress of a fragrant, gentle breeze bringing you rich fragrances. Either soft, sweet, scent of flowers what a salty, refreshing sea air, or the sweet meadow grass. And as you become more and more attuned to the safety and the beauty of this place, feeling thankful and happy to be here. You begin to fight to feel this tingling on your skin, pleasing, pleasant and energizing. Something that contains this expectancy and excitement. And you know with some certainty that this is good and right. It's delightful being here. And there is magic in this place. And something wonderful is just about to happen. And in this magic place, we could imagine we can call upon ourselves from those early ages of our lives. And maybe you could see yourself in the womb or being born. And in that adventure, you are safe for a while, comfortable. And then you came upon the big world. And maybe you were stressed or crying or maybe just unaware, surprised. You may want to hold that baby in your arms and caress that baby and cradle that baby, hold that baby tight. And if you can look at all this beautiful face, the little nose, the cute button there, and the cute chin, the lips, the eyes. And you may want to feel that love that you want to send that baby. All your love. And all the nourishment that baby needed in that moment, that baby needs right now. And other sustenance or emotions, love and care.
We could see that baby growing. Crawling, taking its first steps. And just keep watching the baby, holding that baby close. What would you like to say? You get to say it now. What would this baby need? To grow and develop and find its strength and vitality and energy and find that voice. When the first word, the first words were spoken with power and confidence. You only may want to see that perhaps we could see that surprise, that excitement in the parent's eyes and feel that excitement, the first discoveries of the boys, of toys, of parents, of love, of food and nutrients, of other children, the joy of playing. Let's follow that child the age of two. And allow yourself, visualize that baby. The hair and the curls are the straight hair. Either sleeping or playing. Resting, discovering. And wrap your arms around them, this two year old. What would your two year old need? Say what you need to say, see what you need to see and feel what you need to feel. Allow this baby talk with you. And hug you. And look deeply in your eyes. And you can gaze in each other's eyes. And you can grow together to the age of three, discovering new skills and tools, becoming more independent, more feelings, more emotion. What would your baby need? feel, see, or hear. And it's allow this baby grow. We're growing all together to the age of four. becoming more and more aware. First interactions with the world 
Or maybe something went wrong. And the baby needed to learn something. And that's all right. And now we get to teach that baby, the young child. We get to speak and say what there is to say. And maybe this young child will say it again. And more. Being settled and at home, comfortable. As you are around, knowing that you are protecting. caressing, maybe you can see yourself caressing that child, stroking the hair gently, or maybe you can see yourself putting yourself to sleep. You can allow Yourself seeing this baby grow under your eyes all the way to the age of five. The running around with so much vitality and joy. And maybe you can see yourself enjoying all the good nutrients. And if there is anything that you want to say to this baby, to this young child, or you want to show, or maybe just allow yourself to share an emotion of love, of safety. Or simply just be with yourself at that age. Like a young partner you're just feeling comfortably with. A friend sitting right beside you. Or maybe sitting in your lap. Close to your heart and growing to the age of six. Allowing yourself to see your six year old discovering other children in the kindergarten, going out in the world more, what would you like to say? What would the six-year-old want to tell you? Is there anything That needs to be healed. Allow yourself to feel and hear and see. And hold your six year old hand tight. And let's help them move into the outer world. 
confident and safe. outgoing and resting and processing and enjoying the time alone and enjoying the time with the parents and the siblings if they're around. And as you're holding hands, allow yourself See yourself grow the first of seven years and might be the year when you went to school and your challenges and a bigger world and your children and adults. It might be more anxiousness at that time. Allow yourself to see and hear and feel what you need to feel and guide the seven-year-old with the wisdom of the other, with the love and the peace and the calm. that you can bring from this time. And as you're growing together to the age of eight, this bring more discovery and joy and nutrients and new foods or new experiences and new friends. all that the world has to offer you. And allow yourself to be with the eight-year-old. Flowering, blooming as a nine-year-old. Person. where changes are happening to your body, your hormones. They may not understand everything that is going on with your emotions and your body, and you're still a child, and it's all right. And you might be more vocal or not or maybe more quiet. Allow yourself to feel what you need to feel and hear what you need to hear and see what you need to see as a nine-year-old, allowing that nine-year-old tell you. What he needs to feel Creating that new relationship. For the nine year old. Holding that nine year old. Embracing, caressing. And maybe you want to tell this nine year old, you're going to be okay. You are all right. And that's right. You are just fine. And growing together as a 10 year old. And maybe broadening your life, your environment, your friends. And maybe now you start experiencing failure at school. Or maybe it was earlier and it doesn't really matter. 
when that happens, but you are becoming more and more aware of the social world all around you. Your social environment, you're learning more about your country, about your communities, about your beliefs or others' beliefs. You're becoming more aware And if there is any belief that you want to transform, to heal, this is your chance of having a conversation with your 10 year old. Growing together and developing, developing all the way up to the age of 11. With a heightened awareness. Friends coming in or out in your life. Teachers, mentors. Occasion experiences, friends and siblings, you can guide your eleven year old and hold its emotions of love and say. This cushion of love all around. This cushion of protection. And giving this eleven year old or ten year old. All these other years, all these other ages, providing them this energy of love, vitality. Seeing them grow. Seeing that vitality, that energy bringing life, breathing life. the joy, the excitement. And sometimes that excitement might feel as anxiety. And that's all right. There is a change in a life movement. And we can bring that energy of love and safety and calm. Settling down keeping the joy and expanding that excitement and feeling of comfort and ease that peace and settle. And we can see each other. We can see that 11-year-old growing up to 12. And maybe their first flirt and liking romantic buds, puppy love, and you may be confused. Why is it that you like a certain person in a different way than others? And it might be exciting and it might be right. I be afraid. It could be frightening. And that's all right. 
And you might be concerned of saying the wrong word. You might be rejected. And that's all right. Maybe at that age, you were just interested in friendships and discovering it. And if there is anything that you want to hear for this 12 year old growing up so beautiful. Let's bring that energy and love and nourishment and give that 12 year old a big hug. Wrapping your arms around, comforting that 12 year old so frightened of this new emotion. Growing all the way up to the 13 year old. The new and more experiences. Some good and some not that good. You're taking more risks. And sometimes you want to be safer and take less risks. And sometimes you want to take more risks. And it's this back and forth that keeps the balance. You want to be more independent, becoming a young adult. And you're still a child. And if there is anything you want to hear, you want to say to this 13 year old, uh, there's uh, anything you need to see or feel, just have that conversation now. If there is another age, 14, 15, 16, there are many adventures, much growth, a lot of experiences, of love, of new friends, of friends coming in and out of your life. Experiences with your parents and siblings and family members. And all of that could be a turmoil. And we can allow yours, this young child, this growing adult, Feel safe and wrapping our arms around with a big hug and giving all our love and energy and vitality, the comfort. and the reassurance and now in this safe space where you are you may want to let all these children play together of all different ages Finding toys and sharing laughter and joy. Sharing love and embracing each other. Discovering 
themselves and each other and yourself. And you can be part of all of this joy. You are they. They are you and you are them. Allow them, embrace you and give you all the wisdom and all the love. As you are embracing all of them and giving them all the love and wisdom that you have now. And you can see their faces filled with joy, glowing, thriving, at peace, light, bright, at ease. So confident and so beautiful, so smart, so emotionally connected. Caring, loving and being generous. With all the talents and your gifts, you always have and allow these children to teach you and be a resource for you. And we can embrace them in a big hug and hold them tight and bring them all in your heart and in your body, allowing all of their energy providing the energy that you need now. For the rest of your life. With all that has been healed. For the rest of your life. All these emotions of love and safety oh. for the rest of your life. And let's thank these children and the wonderful energies sending out gratitude. And if there is anything that might be still there to heal, you can always return to this place and meet that child and have a conversation and heal what you need to heal. Or maybe it can be just to rest and find your balance and peace. And it could be in the middle of your day or it could be in the evening or maybe at the beginning of your day, any time when you need this place to provide you wisdom and joy and play and discovery and nutrients that you now need, all the nourishment, emotional and physical, that you need now. Let's take a deep breath in and whenever ready, in your own time and in your own pace, let's return and bring yourself back to the conscious awareness, bringing all this healing with you for the rest of your life. And you may want to wiggle your toes and sway your back side to side, and stretch your arms and give yourself a big, big hug for this wonderful thing. And sway your head side to side, and open your eyes, 
whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne.